The first church I remember growing up was the Brethren Church. I remember uh, a time that all the men left the room because the women were washing each other's feet. There was men's turn to wash the feet, and women's turn to, and they called it a, a love feast. And uh, one of the things I remember about it was that a lot of people going around telling each other how much you love them. You know, um, communion is a celebration of our commonality of knowing Christ, of the love that we have for one another. Turn to someone behind you and in front of you and tell them you love them right now. I love you. Dawn, I love you. Cheryl, I love you. There's a there's some things you can get away with being in a small congregation that you can't in a large one. And uh, But there's a love that we just have for one another here. I want you to turn to Exodus 18. If you, if you in case you've been in Sunday school, um, this is the same text. Um, Mike had no idea that this was my text for today. But Mike shared this this morning. And this is in Exodus chapter 18. Better to get a hundred men to work than to do the work of a hundred men. I'm talking about the life of Moses. Moses was one that we said last week um, experienced the holiness of God. In fact, Moses, when he was first called, uh, was approached by God and spoken to by God and out of a burning bush. Can you imagine? And the place where he was standing, we said, was the first time that the Bible ever used the word holy. Um, and out of that bush, a voice came, it was the living God, and said, take off your shoes, you're standing on holy ground. And from that bush, the Lord commissioned a man by the name of Moses to do the large task of leading a nation, which he was a part of, out of Egypt to be delivered and to go and to follow after their God. And Exodus chapter 18 is at a critical point in the book of Exodus. Prior to this, we see manna from heaven, Prior to this, we see water coming out of a rock. Prior to this, we see the miracles of God. And then in Exodus chapter 18, we see at a crossroad in this book in which God begins to take the authority of Moses and to give it out. You know, kind of like we did the bread today. If I had a loaf of bread here and and I just took this loaf and I just began to tear it apart in front of you and just give you all a piece of it. Uh, Moses began in Exodus 18 at a crucial place uh, to give out the bread. Now, this is important because prior to this, in the Word of God, every time God is mentioned, He is the God of who? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we see throughout the, the Word of God that God chose certain people and God would use individuals to accomplish His purpose. But in Exodus 18, um, we see God beginning to turn and change what He is doing from working with just one particular person to God pouring out His Spirit upon a large group of people, from God working with one person to God working with a nation. And as we move through the Old Testament books, although there were the judges, and although there were the prophets, um, we find that as we move into the New Testament, that God is going away from working with just individuals. Now He's working with a nation. Now he's working with the church in accomplishing his purpose. It's not all about just one person. But God begins to give out authority in the body of Christ. 
What did Jesus say? All authority is given me in heaven and earth. Jesus is the Lord of the church. And Jesus began uh, to give out. He called uh, 70. And then he commissioned 12. And he gave out authority to the 12. To go out and to do what? To cast out demons. To go out and to um, declare as uh, in, uh, in the book of Isaiah, as we were talking about the other week, to declare the year of Jubilee and the year of the favor of the Lord. To touch the blind, to heal the lame, to go out and to um, speak of, of the miracle working power of God. And the disciples did exactly that. Well, we have reached a critical junction in the body of Jesus. It's taken a long time because it had to be worked into this preacher first. And that is that in order for a body to grow and in order for God to take this body to the next level, we have to experience an Exodus chapter 18 in which God stops working with just one man and authority is given out in the body of Christ and we be able to go to a new level that will allow us to grow. In other words, what we're doing is we're expanding the foundation so that God can uh, reach more people and touch more people. It's like this here that D.L. Moody said, and he understood this when he said, it's better to, to, to get a hundred men to go out and to work than for one man um, to do it all. And... He discovered a key principle. Uh, D.L. Moody was instrumental in the whole Sunday school movement that swept across the nation in the 1800s. Well, Exodus 18, uh, follow along with me in verse 1, and I want you to see exactly how this took place, that God began to do a shift. How many of you know that God, God works in certain ways, but God also has the right to be able to change things when he wants to change them? And it was, I believe, God's purpose all along to work with the masses of people. It was never his intention just to always work with one man, Noah. And Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. That God started with one man, but his intention was to work with a group, to work with a nation. He called a people, the Jewish nation. And then he called together a church. And hallelujah, Jews and Gentiles, together we make up the church of Jesus Christ. Exodus 18.1 Now Jethro, the priest of Midian, and the father-in-law of Moses, heard of everything God had done for Moses. And by the way, make a note that Jethro was a pagan man at one point. I don't believe he is in chapter 18 here. But when he first met Moses, uh, and Moses became his son-in-law, he was a pagan. He was a pagan man. And through the period of time, this man Jethro saw the deliverance of Israel from Egypt. He saw the mighty workings of God. He heard from his son-in-law all that God did and said and accomplished. And I believe in, I can't say this for sure, but I believe that in Exodus 18.1, that we're talking about a Jethro who had come to the faith of the Jewish nation, a faith in Almighty God, the God of the Hebrews. Now Jethro, the priest of Midian and father-in-law of Moses, heard of everything God had done for Moses and for his people Israel and how the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt. After Moses had sent away his wife, Zipporah. Now, I want everyone to underline that phrase. This is not permission for everyone to give up your wives and husbands. Okay? Send them away. After all, Moses did this. Send them away. Well, by the way, we know Zipporah more than likely um, was a, a black woman. This later um, became an issue in the leadership of Moses. He was attacked because of this. But, um, you know, I'll tell you how, how low we have come uh, in morality when there are people that actually claim, theologians who claim that this here uh, was an actual um, picture of homosexuality in the Old Testament. 
uh, with this whole idea of Moses sending away his wife. Isn't that sick? Everyone say, that's sick. It really is. And uh, you can just um, look that up in your commentaries and you might uh, see mention to the fact of, uh, of this troubling verse after Moses had sent away his wife Zipporah. But let me give you a biblical explanation why Moses sent away his wife. Okay? After Moses was in the desert, he marries Zipporah, and he has, a, he has two children. I think one of them was like Gershom. Uh, we're studying this on Wednesday morning. And the other one was um, Eliezer. And uh, the Bible actually gives meaning of their names here. But um, then Moses at the burning bush gets a call from God. And the call is that he is to go back to Egypt, which he is a wanted man. What did he do? He killed an Egyptian soldier. And he is to go back to Egypt and he is to declare to the, the, the most uh, mighty person, uh, the most uh, powerful man in the universe at that time, Pharaoh. And he is to go back and declare, let my people go. How many of you men in here, husbands and uh, fathers, would want to bring your children and your wife into that situation? How many of you would say... Uh, uh, honey, I have some bad news to tell you. Today, I came down on Levy. I'm being sent to Afghanistan. Honey, remember that? I'm going to Vietnam. I have orders to report on such and such a day. And all across our nation during that time of World War I, World War II, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, thousands and thousands and thousands of American families did what Moses did right then and there. Honey, I think the best thing for you to do is for us to give up the house and you go and live with my mom. Honey, you take the kids and you go over here and you go back and live with your parents. And so Moses, I believe, looking out for his family, takes his wife and his two children and he says to his father-in-law Laban, who's become a new believer, he says, this is what the Lord has me to do. The Lord has called me. And he says, I don't want to put my family in harm's way. Would you take my family and keep them until such a time as I'm ready to have them back. And how many of you know, in Exodus chapter 18, the time has finally come for Moses' wife to return. Why do we have to like make a scandal about everything? It wasn't no scandal. He didn't send away his wife because she was black or because he was a homosexual or what all the world wants to say. He sent her away because he was protecting her. Now listen to this, and you'll understand why. Look at verse 3. It says, uh, after Moses had sent away his wife Zipporah, his father-in-law, Jethro, received her and her two sons. One son was named Gershom, for Moses said, I have become an alien in a foreign land. And the other was named Eliezer, for he said, my father's God was my helper, and he saved me from the sword of Pharaoh. Jethro, mother, uh, Moses' father-in-law, together with Moses' sons and wife, came to him in the desert where he was camped near the mountain of God. And so Israel has left Egypt, and they're there in the wilderness, and it's time that Moses says, I want my wife and children back. It's okay now for you to come. And I remember um, when I left uh, at different times, and uh, my wife had to follow. When I got orders for Hawaii, that um, I had to do some things. Also, it was going to be me going over there and my wife, and my wife, who was expecting, coming later. But the army knew what they were doing. And so I came in, raised my hand, said I'd serve another year. And they gave her an airline ticket and my wife came along with me. But war has separated families. We see it every night on the news. Soldiers returning. Moms and 